I'm Anthony L. Elmore. I live in Memphis, Tennessee. I am best known in Memphis, Tennessee as the five-time world karate kickboxing champion. It was in 1987 where we wrote, produced, directed, and starred in the first movie of anyone, black or white, we produced the first independent film called The Contemporary Gladiator. My topic for today is Memphis Film Commissioner Lynn Sittler's White Racist Assault on Black Filmmaker and Orange Mound Community. 1929, MGM produced the black musical Hallelujah in Memphis. In 1984, the Canon Group produced the 1984 film titled Making the Grade at Rogues College in Memphis. Please note that it was Memphis black film director Anthony Alp Elmore who produced the third film, feature film in Memphis history. Elmore is the first independent feature filmmaker in Memphis history. Orange Mound, the African American community in Memphis, Tennessee, is the birthplace of the independent filmmaking in Memphis, Tennessee. Black filmmaker Anthony Alp Elmore is the father of Indy Memphis. Elmore in 2021 launched Black Memphis Hollywood, a film company that fights white supremacy and racism. Our African American narratives notes that 1988 was a milestone for Orange Mound. You see, Sheila Echols and Kennedy McKinney won gold medals in the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, Korea, making Orange Mound the only community in America with two gold medals were won from a single community. That is amazing. Now, just as significant, or perhaps even more significant, in 1988, that an Orange Mound community winning more, winning two gold medals, what is even more significant is that Orange Mound became the birthplace of Memphis independent feature filmmaking. Please look at the trailer from Indy Memphis. Now, to the casual eye, this Indy Memphis trailer looks progressive and inclusive, unknown and untold. Regarding Indy Memphis is the untold and unknown black Memphis in the history. What is untold and unknown regarding Indy Memphis is that Orange Mound is the birthplace of Indy Memphis and Orange Mound residence Anthony Alp Elmore is the father of Indy Memphis. While Indy Memphis has a black Creators Forum and Indy Memphis offers opportunities to black filmmakers, Indy Memphis obviously supports the Memphis narrative of white supremacy and racism. Just as important as offering opportunities to African American filmmakers is Indy Memphis offering and supporting the true and black narrative of Indy Memphis. The first independent feature film was produced in Memphis was created in Orange Mound, the first community in America built for blacks by blacks. The father of Indy Memphis is the black man, Anthony Alp Elmore, who continues to live in Orange Mound since 1972. Filmmakers today cannot imagine the obstacles Elmore had to face in 1987. The major obstacle he faced was that he was a black man in a white world of filmmaking. Elmore never had seen a movie set. Further, there did not exist a 35mm film camera in Memphis or even a place that sold or developed 35mm film. 
Where could Elmore look in Memphis to find a movie director or filmmakers? How could a black man who never would have went on a film set go out to, cur to create a major feature? You see, for years, the city of Memphis wrote stories about a group of Memphis State students who created the film, quote, I was a zombie for the FBI, and it was directed by Marius Pinsir. I mean, the city of Memphis won all out to support these white student filmmakers at the University of Memphis. Now, Elmore asked Marius Pinsir to direct his movie, and Pinsir read the movie script and turned down the opportunity. Now, in retrospect, while the city of Memphis honored these white filmmakers as if they were feature filmmakers, yes, they or not anyone in Memphis had ever produced a 35 millimeter film. Like this, if Marius Penza had taken the so role to direct the film, one, he did not I even know. have a 35 millimeter film camera. Yes, he would have to do regret. what Elmore did, go to the closest places where he can rent film equipment. You see, Anthony Elmore contacted African-American cameraman Bill Wallace, who had once worked for Channel 3 News in Memphis. Wallace worked in news during the days of film cameras. Wallace had moved to Chicago, and, El and he flew to Memphis to meet with Elmore, who originally hired an all-black crew. You see, Elmore traveled to Atlanta, Georgia to rent film equipment to find film and the film lab. Now, what is interesting and not told, this black film crew lived in Elmore's home in Orange Mound, and Elmore's home was transformed into a movie set. You see, in 1987, film history was made in Memphis. For the first time in Memphis so history, an independent 35 millimeter film was being produced in Memphis in the black community of Orange Mound. It was historic. It would have been an inspiration for black youth to see in Orange Mound, their black community, an all black crew shooting Memphis first independent 35 millimeter film. Now, white Nothing. film commissioner Leon Sittler, who was the white Memphis film commissioner, was working under white Memphis mayor Dick Hackett. Now, Leon Sittler discriminated against the film because it was an African-American film production. She did not treat the African-American film production producers the way she treated the white people like the way she treated Marius Pensa who made the film I was a zombie for the FBI in 1982 they treated them like they were filmmakers now Lynn Sittler not only did not visit the movie set Lynn Sittler did not inform the Memphis media about Elmore's historic 35 millimeter independent film production production Lynn Sittler proved that black lives, black films, or black filmmakers do not matter. You see, Lynn Sittler, what she did was she got the support of white people in Memphis, and what she does is that she promotes white supremacy and racism. You see, Anthony Elmore knows, if I had gotten or had the support Lynn Settler gave white filmmakers who never created an independent feature film, our film would have been a success. And not only Memphis, our film would have been a success nationwide. But Lynn Sittler used tax dollars in her position as the Memphis Sheriff County Film Commissioner to undermine our product, project. You see, Memphis Film Commissioner and the Memphis media denied Elmore the historic achievement of being named Memphis' first independent filmmaker, Lynn Sittler. Uh, did not even attend the historic movie premiere of the first independent feature film 
in Memphis, although Lynn Sittler was paid with tax dollars, she never reported that Elmore achieved Memphis film history. In fact, in a Thursday, January 23, 2020 email to Tracy Soul and Clifford to Anthony Elmore, Lynn Sittler writes, quote, Research shows that he is not the city's first independent feature filmmaker, as some of his communications have stated. Mars Penzer takes that title. In 1982, he released I Was a Zombie for the FBI, which he directed. In 1984, Steve Ross released The Old Forest, which he directed. Both films were shot on 16 millimeter. Now, what Lynn Sittler did, Lynn Sittler used white supremacy and racism because there is no such thing as a 16 millimeter film release. They did not make a 16 millimeter theatrical film release because release where you cannot play a 16 millimeter film at a movie theater. Now, on the website of Shelby County Mayor Lee Harris, Regarding the Film Commission, it reads, quote, The purpose of the Film and Television Commission is to initiate, recommend, and support policies, programs, projects, and events that support the film production industry. Now, the commission is overseen by Executive Director Lynn Sittler. You see, Elmwood explains that the white executive director, Lynn Settler, used her government office to practice white supremacy, racism, and discrimination. Clearly, while Anthony M. Elmore is the father of Indy Memphis, Elmore's work and contributions and efforts toward the Memphis film industry was subver subverted and undermined by Memphis Film Commissioner Lynn Settler who used Memphis and Shelby County tax dollars to undermine and suppress Elmore's history and contribution as the father of Henry Memphis. Elmore explains that I was the first person, black or white, in Tennessee's history to produce an independent film. In addition to being Tennessee's first independent film producer, our 1988 accomplishments were historic. Elmer explains that 24 years earlier, because I am black, I could not walk in the front door of the Marco Theater downtown, which is now called, which is now the Orphan, because of Jim Crow laws and illegal segregation. We blacks had to sit in the balcony because I produced a 35 millimeter film. I sat in the Marco Theater with with Marco on the Steve. Lightman to screen our 1988 film. The Marco featured our film at two Marco locations. We went from the balcony to the box office. Now, let me explain how Sherry County Film Commissioner Lynn Sittler used her government office to practice white supremacy and racism. You see, Lynn Sittler discriminated against us. Please Google Anthony Elmore in the LA Times. What comes up from the LA Times is the archives stating films going in production. It says the Contemporary Gladiator, November 22nd, 1987. Because we were the first film production in Tennessee to produce an independent feature film production and because we were African American, Lynn Sittler undermined and subverted our film contribution in history because we are black filmmakers achieving history and we beat the white filmmakers. Memphis Shelby County Film Commissioner Lynn Settler used white supremacy and racism to deny Anthony Elmore and Black Orange Mound of, his, of its historical place in Memphis independent film history. Lynn Settler's white supremacy has the support a white Memphis Mayor Jim Strickland who supports her. Now, in regards to black on black racism, African American Shady County Mayor Lee Harris support Lynn Sittler and 
he is silent and complicit to white supremacy and racism. Black or African American Mayor Lee Harris campaigned on teaching our kids education, yet this black mayor allows white supremacy and racism and he is complicit and silent to the racism of the nine Orange Mound and Anthony Alp Elmore of his historic achievement of being Memphis's first independent film and filmmaker. Dr. Martin Luther King said, quote, silence is betrayal. <laughs>